Hi everybody, it's me, R. Dallas. I recently sat down with Jimmy Bogard, author of Automapper and Mediator, to talk about recent developments with these libraries. This is an excerpt of that conversation. You can watch the full interview here. Enjoy. Uh, all right, so in, in the not open source scenario, what does is, what is licensing look like? If, if I'm <laughs> a team and I want to use it, you know, uh, maybe, maybe I'm in a small company or I'm in a university or maybe I'm at Microsoft. Like, does, does that matter? I know it does. I'm kind of leading the question. No, here. no, I gotcha. What, what's, yeah, the, uh, another... what's the breakdown here? Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Let me have a few seconds of your time to tell you about where you can learn more from me on Dome Train. I'm a big fan of software principles and architecture and helping developers write better code faster. And that's what my courses on Dome Train focus on. If you're new to ASP.NET Core, then you're gonna to wanna to take the ASP.NET Core Getting Started course. But otherwise, if you're a senior developer, I highly encourage you to check out my Modular Monolith Getting Started course here at the bottom. You can also get it with a bundle with the deep dive. You'll learn that you rarely need microservices if what you're really after is modularization and code that doesn't devolve into a big ball of mud. Now, Dome Train is often running a custom deal, but you can always get 20% off by using code R Dallas. Now back to the video. Yeah, this probably is what took me the, the most time in launching all this was researching licensing schemes mm -hmm. and then picking one that I liked personally and I thought would resonate well with folks that want to use the library. Because I basically, I, like, one of my goals was I didn't want to burden folks too much that are making the switch. Mm -hmm. um, like, going to, like, I, I mean, selfishly, I want to have the maximum conversion rate possible, but sure. also selfishly, I don't want to spend all of my time dealing with like ticky tack, you know, license keys and stuff like li all these ticky tack sort of things. So right. a lot of licenses out there are per seat. So that's basically yeah. every single developer in your team needs a license for the thing, which makes sense for things like IDEs, uh, control libraries. You know, you can you know like who? Well, you know, these people are the ones that are developing PDF reports. So those folks need licenses because they're all getting that value all the time. Right. Um, uh, this one's a little harder because it's uh, you you're not necessarily using it all the time. You're using it, well, I mean, I guess Mediator. Honestly, I use it on all the endpoints that I have. So I just like all the time. Sure. But I didn't want to have the administrative overhead of every single time someone comes on board, they have to go remember to do this. And that is one of those things I saw that, well, if I'm a decision maker, a budget decision maker, I remember having to deal with that when I was on teams with individual licenses and I hated it. I was like, oh, right. someone new got onboarded. Yay, we're growing. But now I got to procure like X number of these licenses. Yeah. So oftentimes that's why you have these giant procurement companies and resellers. They can say, well, we'll sell you a pack of five and then it's at a discount and all this stuff. So like, I don't want to deal with that. So yeah. I designed the licensing to be more team organization based rather than individual seats. Okay. And I also wanted to do some kind of scheme that the majority of folks, uh, I don't have to like design a license for smaller businesses and folks that are like either individuals or hobbyists or things like that. So from the get-go, I announced licensing. There are a set of folks I said, I don't really want these folks to have to pay because it could be proportionally a large amount of their budget. Where larger companies, right. it's like a blip on the radar. It's just like a, a rounding error for, for other companies. And it's hard to like bucket all of these things together in some you know single scheme. So yeah. basically I said, for a certain set of folks, I just, you will have a community license that is free. Um, it expires after a year, but you just like go and sign up again and say, give me another license, whatever. Um, and so those are gonna be folks like, if you're a nonprofit, if um, with certain caveats, of course, which I forget what they are actually, like. It was a total budget. Uh, totally, yeah, it's basically total budget. So it's it's um, it's really like getting some revenue amount where if you're a for-profit company or nonprofit, if you're below a revenue limit, then it's free for you. Unless you want the premium benefits, then you can pay, but it's it's free for to use. Also free for non-production use. So if you're like pre-production and you're trying to test it out, you don't need to buy a license, you can use community license. Um, right. You only pay for, for production use. Um, if you're an individual for your know, hobbyist, open source developer, you don't need to pay for a license as well. The community license can work for you. So just a class of folks, I'm like, I'm not trying to charge them. 
I mean, I, mm -hmm. I guess I could try to charge them, but I think that I don't think that that would go very well. So I just picked a revenue limit. Um, it's actually sort of high because I, I said, I have, you know, I even have some revenue limit that says below this, then you don't have to pay for a license. You can pay for one if you want the premium features, but if you don't, you don't have to. Right. Um, and I wind up going with 5 million for that mm -hmm. in revenue, um, which most other folks are 1 million, but I talked to a few biz dev folks and they basically told me like 1 million is, if you look at a, an organization of developers with a one, annual $1 million uh, budget or revenue, uh, that's uh, not that many developers. Right. It's, it's uh, not like, US. No, not yet. Yeah, that's the thing. In the US, it's not. I, mean, I know other countries have different whatever, but this is 1 million US. So in other countries that have a lower dev salary, um, that actually gives you a higher uh, <laughs> limit mm -hmm. number of developers you can actually take on. So anyway, right. well, whatever. I couldn't really, I don't, I didn't do a lot of research to say what was a good number, but I thought 1 million slow. And I remember working in Headspring, we went from one to 5 million and that was about 20 developers or like 15 to 20, make for, for, for an engineering company, it's 20 mm -hmm. developers. And there's like five admin folks, other, sure. you know, other companies may be different, but whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, well, that seems like a reasonable number, five million. Um, so that even though that left money on the table, it also meant that um, that a lot of folks that are using it today, uh, as their company grows, they're not having to worry about like this this cost associated with it. Really, that's once you hit that you know that threshold of five million, you're like a bigger company, and then you're going to have more needs. You know, you're right. going to want that support option. You're going to want uh, more direct contact. You're going to want all the things that bigger companies want that little, little smaller companies don't care about as much. Right. No, that makes sense. And I think that is a pretty generous, like limit cap compared, like you said, I mean, so many are at 1 million, um, that, that that's where it would, you know, turn into a commercial pay for license versus a community license. I have no idea if that's a good idea or not. One of the things that I don't have is like any details or data of like, who's downloading this. Right. And, and that's, gives that's you just how NuGet is. It doesn't give you anything. That's it. Yep. So, I mean, I got this crazy spreadsheet that's trying to reverse engineer into companies. And then if you want to see like, okay, who are companies that are using .NET and what's their company size, then you got to pay like Gartner or something, you know, 10 grand. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> that's more than I want to like think about this number. So I just <laughs> picked right. a number that was bigger than one. I was like, five is bigger than one. How about just, that? Just just add chat GPT. It'll, it'll tell you something. Sure, yeah. it'll be accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so from there, then it was like, okay, I'll do based on number of developers on your team using using these tools. So again, talking to a ton of folks to see well what kind of makes sense, what are the multipliers, and I wanted to make sure that as you grow, I wasn't like penalizing you for growing either. So like it should be cheaper the more developers you have. So for like one to ten developers. It was like, I think I targeted 50 bucks a month for, for the whole team. This is not per developer. It's only team-based right. pricing, which right. for 10 developers averages $5 a developer per month, which is, month. I think. Yeah, it's like a cup of coffee. Yeah, a cup of coffee in some cities in the United States. In right. some cities, it's not even enough for a cup of coffee. Sure. Uh, so that was the idea. It's like, well, if you, it, as you add developers to your team, as your company grows, you don't have to keep coming back to say, oh, I need another per seat license it just it's able to get you to that so i did some research and basically like one to ten is like one good bucket then the next bucket is like so let's, let's say standard professional enterprise then enterprise is 11 to 50 which is about what i saw like larger organizations have under a single kind of budget decision maker is like right. about 50 is is under like the next level budget decision maker and from there it's more of like ah screw it um, there's just infinity developers, unlimited developers. You can buy one for the whole enterprise. Um, and there's like just kind of a multiplier, you know, like it's one X, three X, eight X is about what I saw for what other people did for these kinds of multipliers. So for a large sure. organization with a thousand developers using it, um, I don't know if that's actually the case, but just spitballing here, then you're, you, you would yeah. pay less per head than right. the, the lower. So it's trying to have sort of a graduated model in that case. Also enterprise yeah. folks also want like enterprise procurement, um, which 
takes tons of time. And so they're also kind of paying for that as well as if I got to fill out your weird spreadsheet, then right. you also, you know, it's just, they're just used to this sort of thing. So, yeah, it's weird how, when you become a big company, it's uh, it's harder for you to just run a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so suddenly it's like, oh, we'll pay you net 60 after you fill out our paperwork and sign into our special portal for how you get paid. Like, no, just send me a check or, you know, go send me an ACH to my bank account or here's my <laughs> credit card page. Like, what do you think this is? We're not getting married. Yeah, no, I've already, I've already got those requests, but I mean, it, it's kind of priced that way as well. I just sort of understand that at those higher levels, but even still the price for, for the enterprises is still like a rounding error. I'm sure biz dev folks would say that I should be charging more, but I, I, the point was not to like retire with the yachts. The point was, I want a fun development again. Like it's been five years of almost nothing. I want to get back to where I was before where by spending a good amount of time on these projects, investing back into them and actually right. connecting to end users. Like, okay, let's make, let's all make this better um, to you know, basically just regain my sponsor that I lost. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions or comments, please leave them below. If you'd like to see the full interview, you'll find it here. Keep improving.